Watch this. Hey guys. So 622 has been out for a while. I've been playing it and I've been learning all the ins and outs of this patch and I decided to make a video sharing my thoughts on it. I did uh, something kind of like this when the patch first came out, but now I have a better sense of what is actually good and not good on this patch and I thought I would share it with you guys. So I'll just start off with the assassin updates. I'm going to go through each assassin and just tell you my thoughts on them so far. So the first one is Talon. Uh, I was really excited about the Talon update because I was a really big Talon player for the last couple seasons. I really enjoyed Talon, but last season after he got nerfed, there wasn't really a whole lot of reason to play him anymore because he was just so much weaker than the other class of mid laners. It was just too difficult to lane and transition to the mid to late game as a mid lane AD assassin. And, you know, it was just difficult because you were also an AD champion and you're close range and people were still picking control mages. And this patch is no different. You still have to play against a lot of victors, Cassiopeias. It's very common to play against a control mage now, uh, even more so than it was before, because if you're playing a mid lane champion that's melee, you're going to be at a pretty big disadvantage if they're playing a control mage, simply because they have the laning phase advantage. Their range, they can poke you, push you. Uh, they have the mid to late game transition that's still advantageous in these types of matchups. So the new Talon. He, he has like a lot of promise with the potential to roam, but unfortunately his laning phase mid means he loses to control mages even harder than he did before. So I don't see him being a very good mid laner. I've played him mid. It felt terrible to play him against Victor. You really don't have any opportunities to just straight up all in a good player mid lane. If they're not so great, then I could see Talon being pick worthy at lower ELOs, maybe up until Diamond or so. He could be a good pick if people aren't very aware of uh, roam opportunities and they're not warding up as much his ability to go from mid lane to bot lane to top lane and just snowball the team is still there but if you take the right precautions talon mid lane is is not a good pick i haven't seen as much talon top lane but i think he's going to get bullied out of a lot of matchups so i've got to say I don't, i'm not too impressed with the talon changes because it made him weaker in team fights and he already struggles in laning phase. The only thing they improved on is his roaming capabilities, and that isn't enough to make up for how uh, little damage he has now comparatively in team fights. And he doesn't have a great way to gap close in team fights. The Q is a dash, but the range is nowhere near as good as the old E ability. So, and if you use his Q as a dash, you're not getting as much damage. I wasn't too impressed with the talent update. I'm sure he'll get buffed in some way. But they have to be careful because if they make his damage a lot better and he still has the same room opportunities, then it could get problematic for low elos. I mean, I can imagine he's a problem champion right now. I heard he was like permabanned because if you don't have great map awareness, he can just run around and pick up kills. And, you know, it, even if your champion doesn't have the best base damage at the start of the game to mid game, if you have a huge item lead, then it can make up for that. The Katarina update. Uh, this is the one that I probably haven't seen as much of as I would like because I've seen mostly Katarina's feeding really hard. Even though it looks like there's a lot of potential to play her well, and maybe there's just like a high skill ceiling to her and people haven't mastered her yet. Because her ratios are really good, and I guess it's just it's a combination of you know mid lane melee champions still not being pick worthy against control mages. And people just not being very good at Katarina, but right now most Katarinas are just feeding. Um, it hasn't been very impressive. I've, I've, it's going to be like that for most new champions, but it doesn't look like she's outstandingly OP or anything like that. I think she's just, uh, I don't know why they even said they were trying to get rid of the feast or famine aspect of her, but she still feels pretty uh, feast or famine. I mean, she's she's either going to be completely useless or as strong as any assassin can be when you're just. Uh, roaming around on people that have no map awareness. LeBlanc update. Uh, this was really weak, actually. I was really terrified of LeBlanc update. After I watched their little video, I was pretty sure I was going to permaban her. And then I played against a couple of LeBlancs. I still haven't played as LeBlanc, but I've seen a lot of uh, good players play LeBlanc. And, I mean, she's much harder to play than the old LeBlanc, I think, because there's more opportunities to make plays with her different abilities but still not impressed. I, I Just something about her damage seems really inconsistent and difficult to do. I mean, it, like last season, no one in high elo really had trouble with assassins. I mean, there were a couple assassins like Kha'Zix last season that were 
they were questionable. Um, I don't think we'd consider Nidalee an assassin. I guess if we did, then she was problematic, right? I mean, but it, I don't really consider her an assassin. I think she falls into a different category. But LeBlanc falls into an assassin category, and what I would define it, an assassin as is someone that has to get very close to deal their damage. So in a team fight, uh, you get very close, and you might have a lot of mobility, but a lot of times you're taking poke damage. So because of your limitation by your range, even if you've got a lot of mobility, once the five-man roaming group starts, where the enemy team is just playing around Baron, they're grouping up their sieging, as an assassin, your options become so much more limited than other mid laners, say the, the Victors, the Cassiopeias, the Syndras, and are still really good, then he's like, what do you really do? Like, why pick an assassin if that's what happens against good players? So I feel like there's a big difference right now when you play an assassin and when you just play something standard and normal. Because as an assassin, you have to snowball in order to like prevent the enemy team from having that uh, premature grouping phase when your team's not far enough ahead to fend it off. Because if you play LeBlanc mid lane, your wave clear is not going to be that consistent and great. If they start sieging you, it's going to be really hard to uh, do anything about. And you can't really assassinate anyone if they're just out in the open and just pushing. So she doesn't seem very impressive. Um, I would have to probably play her more than zero games to get the fullness out of her. But from what I've seen, I've seen challenger players attempt to play her and look at the numbers and stuff. I think there's a lot to be desired with the with this update. And you also have to keep in mind that other classes got buffed. So tanks got buffed this patch. You have Courage of Colossus. You have all these new support itemization paths. So an assassin like LeBlanc, if you pick her and they have like a Janna that's going Redemption or even just built a locket standard, it's even harder to make a champion like this work. And I feel like assassins aren't even favored right now with how good some of the other classes like tanks and supports are right now. So with LeBlanc potentially being weaker with the update and tanks and supports being better and they were already pretty good against assassins, it really doesn't make sense to pick her. The Ringer update, um, I think this one is very interesting to talk about because I've seen lots of mixed results. I've seen Rengars go 20-0, and 0, and I've seen Rengars just go 4-8 and 8 and lose. So a lot of it has to do with his new passive. Um, if you're getting the unique champion kills, you can see a massive difference in, in damage, right? Like going from 2% at one stack to 4%, or 4 trophies being 20%, it's huge. So if you get going on Rengar, he's completely busted like if you get to five trophies pretty early into the game and the enemy team is not grouping up immediately then you're just going to be running around one-shotting people but because a lot of his damage is weighted on getting these trophies if you don't get ahead and they group up you're screwed like it, you're actually screwed it, because a lot of your damage is just straight up loaded into this passive like that you need that passive to be stacked up for everything else to be enough damage for you to jump in and one shot an 80 carry um because their support's just going to be building OP itemization and protecting that AD carry. So I, I think Rengar is, is probably too overtuned uh, because in, lo in like most of the brackets of play, it, you're going to be able to get fed on Rengar. I would say there's going to be a big difference between like Diamond, Master, and Challenger for a champion like this. I would probably say if you play... It, like Flex Q is a little bit different, but I mean, basically, if you're playing against uh, people that were placed or finished in like bronze, silver, gold, or platinum last season, this champion's going to be so busted playing against them. Like crazy OP. But above that, um, he becomes more questionable. Definitely way more feast or famine than he, he was before. But uh, pretty crazy, right? I mean, if you get ahead on this champion, that's just, that passive is crazy. Uh, the Fizz update, uh, I just feel like so many, so many of these assassins are... Maybe good as long as you can place them mid lane, not against the control mage. And Fizz is no different. I mean, he can do a lot of damage if he can fully charge this W. Um, I think a lot of Fizzes are actually maxing W now over E, so it's like you you max W and E and ult whenever you can. And so much of your damage is weighted in this W, but you have to wait at least two seconds to trigger the the extra damage effect of this. And if you use it before then, you're missing out on a lot of your damage. So if you pick Fizz against a control mage mid lane. You're just going to have to deal with, you know, Fizz having a really bad early laning phase. He doesn't have a lot of options to fight his laner until a little bit later on in the laning phase unless they make a huge mistake and they're not up to snuff and they're just maybe a boosted player. But 
this didn't really change Fizz's bad laning phase. Like he's got some really, really bad matchups and some matchups that are like free if, if your opponent doesn't know what they're doing. But this didn't really change that. I mean, in some regards, it actually made Fizz weaker. If you're doing a point blank ult, it's weaker. Uh, a max range ult is easier to dodge, so that's where the counterplay is. And I mean, he's just going to be really situational. Like it just depends on what you're against. If you pick, if you're able to play Fizz into a melee mid laner, I would say Fizz is going to be amazing. Like he's just going to do so much. Uh, damage and like a cr close range fight. But then if you put, a lot of people are trying Fizz top lane, like you put Fizz top lane against a tank and you can't do anything. So he needs to be against like a squishy champion that he can get close enough to trigger the W and they don't just like Syndra wreck him. Um, so there's potential here, but once again, like assassins just don't even feel good on this patch. Like it's hard to say if, if this is like even worthwhile playing most of these assassins considering the normal way of playing with tanks and supports and like a control mage mid and an AD carry that can be babysat, it just makes assassins like obsolete. Now the Kha'Zix is, is an assassin that I would say, even though assassins aren't favored right now, you can absolutely crush with this champion. This is, in my opinion, the strongest uh, assassin update, even stronger than Rengar, because I think you're broken no matter what on Kha'Zix. You can literally do any evolution and it's strong. Uh, my personal favorite evolution order is is Q E and then R, but I've even like skipped E and like started with the R evolution W second and then like Q last. There's really no wrong way of doing it. I mean, there's going to be more optimal times to do the R evolution first over the Q. Um, I found that if you're planning on invading enemy jungler, you should do the R evolution first and then E evolution second and then Q evolution last. Um, if you plan on just farming, you just go for the Q evolution then E evolution. Just because if you're farming, you can basically farm dragons insanely fast. Your Q evolution gives you a 60% uh, cooldown reset. So you do dragon almost 60% faster, and you can do baron 60% faster. So he just got better. Like, Kha'Zix was a champion that didn't need to get better. They could have kept him the exact same from last season, and he would still be, like, pretty good. But they made him even better, and I would say he's probably going to get nerfed. He's uh, just crazy overtuned right now um I've, I've i've only lost one game on kha'zix and that one game that i lost it was because we we basically threw it but um i've won every single game that i have done the q evolution first on kha'zix and that was like five games or so um akali uh pretty bad um one of the reasons why i feel like she got worse is because it does take longer to deal damage on her uh, mainly because of the R uh, damage nerf, it, it just it's a very very heavy heavy damage nerf. So you don't have as much burst up front on a Kali, and even though they ask they add like really nice things like this, the cooldown reset being sixty percent, like oh you can you can maybe get a reset in a team fight or you can farm a little bit better with this, doesn't help her laning phase. I mean there are so many assassins that have just a terrible laning phase and and they have to deal with it and then be strong enough to like counteract that mid game. Akali's laning phase is still bad most of the time. Like you can't slap her mid lane unless you want to get Syndra or something. It's it's really hard to make her work. I mean, a lot of these assassin updates, I feel like they they wanted them to not be OP, so they purposely undertuned them a little bit, and maybe they're gonna buff them. But yeah, I mean, tanks are really good right now. Supports are really strong. Why pick Akali when you're gonna be countered so hard by these like insanely tanky champions and an AD carry that's gonna be buffed up? past the point where you can burst them so the only time she works is if you're really getting isolated kills and that, those just don't happen as much anymore against good players um the w change is really nice but i mean <laughs> they just like straight nerfed a lot of the front loaded burst on assassins and then just buff tanks and support so it doesn't doesn't really make sense i, I would be fine I, th I think they should have just like kept the damage the same and then like with the sports and tanks being buffed it, it should be fine but um Okay, so the Zed update, uh, this has some potential, but I mean, <laughs> the game I played Zed, I, I won. I, I felt really weak the entire game. My lane opponent rushed Hourglass. Uh, early lethality, this is something I haven't really talked about too much, and it's another reason why Talon and Zed are just... Uh, they're just... They feel so weak right now because lethality is the replacement for armor pin, and it's not great. 
So one of the reasons why Lethality is not great is because it's the opposite of what Armor Pin was supposed to mean for champions that are AD-based but ability-based. Um, these type of champions need to exploit the base damage on their abilities to burst, acquire kills, and snowball and impact the game that way. Lethality gives you 40% armor, armor pin up front and then scaling based on um, your enemy's level. So getting early lethality is bad now. So you, it's like the opposite. Like when you went armor pin before, you wanted to rush it because that was when that armor, armor pin was going to be most impactful. Your opponent's base armor was going to be lower the earlier into the game it was. And later on in the game, they're more likely to be able to build armor in conjunction to their normal itemization path. Like even AD carries can pick up like a chain vest after three, um, three offensive items and be okay. And then like rip all your your lethality because they they just spend 800 gold. But um, so I'm really not too happy with where Talon and Zed are because of the lethality changes. In addition to the fact that supports and tanks got better, and Zed's no different. Um, his ultimate. This this like extra damage on this is only worth it if they're like a gen. I, I was like killing a really f like I was in a super late game um, team fight and I killed like a Kha'Zix that was really fed and I only got like it was like fifty or sixty attack damage and I was thinking I was like man that's a lot of AD and then I was like thinking about it in the grand scheme of things I was like this is not adding too much damage at all because they have so much armor already so. It was just like there's like a really big problem. I, that same game, I had to go like Lord Dom's and Black Lever just to be able to deal with how much armor they had. So I, I'm not too impressed with the the slight Zed change. I mean, he just got put in a worse place because of the lethality. Lethality will become better than armor pin around level 12, I think. But at that point, they're buying armor, so <laughs> it's like, well, your armor pin is is not really taking you anywhere. Um. I've seen some echoes do pretty well. This change, these changes were like not too significant, but I feel like because a lot of the AP assassins aren't affected by lethality, they're still in an okay place, even though assassins aren't favored. Um, this is just like an okay change. Like if you if you were like a big echo player before, I mean, it's like decent. But um, these AP assassins are mostly like playable because lethality doesn't affect them. You know, magic pin is is still as good as it was before. The Shaco update, uh, very bad. Uh, very, very, very bad. Mostly because of the Deceive change. Uh, you can't just put one point in Deceive anymore and just like run around the map and, and do your thing. You actually have to like max Deceive first when you're playing AD Jungle Shaco, and that takes away a lot of his power elsewhere, and it's only until the max rank that it gets like pretty decent, um, or the last two ranks, where it's actually like better than it was before. But, I mean, he can do some okay damage, it's just, why would you want to play Shaco when everything else is so much better? Like, you pick Shaco, wow, you can never kill a tank. Um, AP Shaco got a little bit different. Uh, still kind of bad because you can't just put one point deceive. But, um, I mean, the the old changes, like, you get the little Illuminati boxes. Like, it, it could be fun. But I think the major reason why I'm not playing Shaco and probably won't is because of the deceive change. Like, you can't just put one point in it. It's not enough stealth duration to make ganks worthwhile, so they kind of made them a lot worse. Uh, the stealth mechanics, I mean, stealth champions did get a little bit better, but a lot of them, like Talon, I think indirectly got nerfed. So they, they're they really dependent on that stealth to make things worthwhile. So it's like a lot of the stealth champions got weaker, so it's not that scary. If you if you got a good support and your tanks are doing their job, like assassins are... Uh, control words... They're actually a little bit weaker, in my opinion, than old pink words, but I think that was intentional. Um, you can carry more of them now, so you know the the great ward battles and whatnot will still happen. Um, yeah, I mean, before pink words were kind of ridiculous if you were buying them against certain champions, uh, you know, just like completely crippling stealth champions and, and control wards. I mean, it. They're definitely not as good as pink quartz. I, I don't think there's much argument there. Um, I mean, it can disable traps, but that's really buggy. Like there was like a video where it was like sometimes working, sometimes not working. So, um, not too, not too proud of that change. But I mean, it had to be done if they were going to move the game in this direction, because then 
you could just still buy pink words and hard counter these stealth champions that are already kind of weak right now. Lethality, I already talked about that a little bit. Uh, it's not great. Lethality items are... I mean, you kind of still have to build them later on, but you get penalized by rushing it early. Not too happy about that, because a lot of the champions I like to play uh, definitely benefited from this. And Rengar and Kha'Zix, you can play them without getting any lethality and just like, you know, go straight attack damage, and they're still just like ridiculously good. And they're mostly good because they can be independent from lethality, but you can still build lethality later and make them like about the same, which is they're still good. But a lot of champions that were dependent on armor pin to be stronger, like I'm, I'm thinking of Zed rushing Ghostblade, he wasn't even like favored before, but the changes kind of made him worse because of this. Uh, Serrated Dirk, I mean, this is just a straight nerf to the item. The item is just weaker. They can make up for it a little bit by extra mobility to roam, but just imagine what's the point of having extra out-of-combat movement speed when your opponents are competent? It becomes harder to make use of out-of-combat out of movement speed when you're weaker. Like, if you're not do if you're able to dominate lane, then having out-of-combat movement speed is great, because you push, you harass, you kill your lane opponent, you're running around the map, but if you can't do that, if you're not able to push and roam, then you're roaming and you're just like losing your tower you're losing lots of golden experience so this feels like a step in the wrong direction like if you have to roam to win as an assassin uh you're innately just going to lose so many matchups mid lane or top lane or bot lane like a lot of ad carries got hurt by not having early armor pin it just doesn't make sense like it was a change that hurt so many champions that weren't even supposed to be affected um uh, but who knows? I mean, this is only the start of the preseason. I'm sure they're going to make a lot of changes before uh, things happen. This is very similar to Serrated Dirk. I mean, it just turns into it. Edge of Night, this item is sometimes really good and sometimes really bad. It really depends on what you're playing and what they're playing. I would say uh, combo-dependent champions are going to have a hard time with this. So... Sometimes you could build this against, say, like a Malzahar and have some success if you're playing something like Zed. Like, if you're if you're gonna play Zed, like you you will probably have to itemize in some way to stay alive. And this could be pretty good on champions that you're preparing to go in, like you're thinking about it, you go in and it's really quick. Uh, sometimes good on Talon, I guess. But a lot of the champions that would build this, I just feel like aren't very strong right now. Duskblade. This is actually one of the better lethality items. Uh, there's certainly going to be some champions that use this better than others. It's a good roaming item. Um, it's probably better than building Ghostblade now. A lot of times, if you're if you're playing like a AD assassin type champion, like you might not go Ghostblade and Duskblade. You might just get Duskblade and maybe consider getting other lethality items because Ghostblade got so much weaker. And this is still like okay for roaming. Like this is a pretty good passive for roaming. Um, and this is a pretty strong passive, but it's obviously going to be better on some champions over others. So, doesn't like this item's like not good enough to make AD champions like suddenly broken or anything like that. It's just like okay, well, this is one of my only options to build. Ghostblade just got weaker. I mean, they lowered the cost on it. It doesn't have attack speed on it. Uh, the fact that you ignore unit collisions kind of like well, doesn't really matter. I mean, the champions that use this usually don't have to deal with unit collision, and um, not having that attack speed. This was like a really underrated part about Ghostblade. This and the armor pin were really strong, actually, because the champions that were building this like didn't really have attack speed in their build path, like Talons and Zeds. You were like building like uh, zeal items on those champions most of the time. So having 40% extra attack speed, uh, you pop this and kill a tower really quickly, or in a team fight, you're able to get a couple extra auto attacks in. So this item just got so much weaker. I, I don't like this item anymore. I think the major reason to build it before is because it had the highest flat armor pin in the game, and it was really good for the price, and everything was just good about this item. Now it's it's pretty bad. Uh, Maw got changed. Uh, sometimes you're just not, not going to go Maw, even though you need a magic resist item. You'll go Edge of Night. This doesn't have lethality on it. It just gives CDR. It, it feels like an overall weaker item than it was before because you don't have armor pin, and CDR is a stat that's still very easy to get. So not too impressed with this. I mean, it's still easier to use than Edge of Night because this is automatic. And if you're like me and you don't like to have like five actives and a champion that requires like spamming abilities, then sometimes Maw is like a better option just because you don't have to think about an extra active or misuse the active or 
just flat out forget to use the active. Oh, plants. I have mixed feelings about plants. I feel like plants are cool in the sense that they add a lot of new elements to the game. Um, the one thing I don't like about plants is that it feels really difficult to keep track of like what is coming up and what is not up. And you know, when you're looking at something in the fog of war, a lot of times like it'll still show you where the location is. Like when you're looking at it in the fog and it looks like it's up. Like, it's like, oh, this blast cone is up. I'm going to run to it. And then you realize you get there and it's not up. And you're like, oh, well, rip, I'm dead. So maybe that's just because I'm so new to using plants and other players are too. And we haven't memorized the timers and stuff like that and the respawn. But it feels very kind of random. It's just like, I don't know if something's going to be up or not. I just kind of go and check. And I was like, oh, it's up. So if, if it's around me, I use it. And a lot of players are doing the same thing. It's like, oh, I can just scout vision with this uh scryer's bloom i don't really know their name i know what they do i just see it but their names are still coming to me but the scryer's bloom pretty good it actually reveals wards uh, so it's pretty good for scouting pretty good for invading um the blast cone creates a lot of opportunities by invading you can get in and get out it helps you when you're getting invaded on it just adds that extra element of like cool things can happen i've so far been pleased with that scryer's bloom um to be honest, it's it's like hard to say being able to scout like that is, is fun when it's against you uh, because if someone just like walks up and hits it and you're like trying to sneak up on them, it's like, bam, well, you're foiled and they just got to see where all your vision is. So this feels kind of hard to balance because you can just use it in an area, see where all their vision is, avoid it, or uh, I guess in some cases uh, you, you're just going to use it to make sure that your jungle is safe or something like that, not necessarily when you're invading. But it kind of, it kind of makes blast cone weaker, I guess, because if you're like looking to an invade and make some crazy plays, like this is like the counterplay to that. And I don't know, I'm I'm like pretty happy with with those two so far. It just kind of feels weird to have Scryer's Bloom do um, what it does and just like reveal words and stuff like that. In addition to scouting, um, Honey Fruit. This seems actually really really good. Uh, I've never been punished for taking honey fruit. I just kind of go in the river, take it, and uh, it just feels great. Like when you're jungling, you like go do river, river crab and do honey fruit, and you find yourself in a situation where you can actually gank despite being really low after you finished your jungle. So really happy with honey fruit. Um, I don't know if they're going to nerf it or not, but I could definitely see them nerfing it because it just adds a huge amount of sustain to some champions that might not necessarily need it and mid laners can go and get it and stuff like that. I mean, it could be something that people fight over more and maybe when people get used to this uh, the spawn timers, it will mean uh you know, there's like big fights that'll happen in the river and maybe that's what they're they're trying to do with that, but right now it just feels like, oh, I'm just going to go get that and I don't have to recall now. So, I don't know. It's pretty cool. I I'm pretty happy with the the plants, but I wish it was more predictable and what was going to spawn and, and not such a seemingly random manner. Uh, the smite changes as a jungler i like this uh i really like the fact that they they did what they did with smite and removing the buffs you get from smiting jungle monsters this this helps out a lot of junglers that had really big issues early game because you just kind of smite get your health back uh, some junglers just straight up didn't benefit from smiting krugs and or benefit from smiting gromp and most of the time you're just like spamming your smite on the raptor camps and the wolf camps just uh for vision and stuff like that so uh, and like to be able to detect their vision, but with Scry with Scryer's Bloom, you don't really need that as much anymore. And uh, this is just like a buff to some junglers that have like a terrible early clear because the jungle did get a little bit harder if you can't do Krugs and Raptors quickly. Hunter's Machete, uh, it's still actually better to do Talisman a lot of times because they added more small jungle monsters, and the more monsters hitting you, or you're able to proc. Uh, the tooth passive, you'll get more sustain that way. So this buff to Hunter's Machete and them not changing any numbers on Talisman is actually because Talisman got a lot better, but it's not as obvious. And Hunter's Machete is like pretty decent, but um, I think Hunter's Talisman and a lot of champions that can proc it, like Kha'Zix, it's just well and above what you can get from Hunter's Machete. But, you know, if you're an attack speed jungler, you'd benefit more from this before anyways, and still probably better to do that Hunter's Machete over Talisman. Um, they made it so uh, the camps take a lot longer to respawn. I'm actually happy with this because this is eliminating a little bit of what Nidalee 
and some of the other like super tier junglers could do well and that's they would like clear the jungle and then they could like continue clearing the jungle and they were like they were like everywhere and that's they're still op like nidalee's still just completely broken because she does everything well but um this like removes a little bit of that super lead you could get in the jungle you can still get a super high lead like if you can clear your side of the jungle really quickly and you can run into their jungle and kill them and take their jungle then i mean the power to you you're gonna win that game more likely than not but um this makes it so you can you can possibly play those like really bad uh slow clearing junglers because you're not punished as much uh because you're, you're not missing out on that much by being significantly slower other than the fact that they can get gank pressure river crabs uh vision all of the scryer blooms you know there's still like a tremendous amount they can get but they won't be able to continue farming their jungle um, so that's like the biggest difference is they can't just clear the jungle then go back and start again there's like a pretty big time between uh, clearing and then being able to go back to re-clear so that gives an opportunity for slower junglers to not just instantly lose the game even though there's a, a good jungler will punish you for how slow you're you're clearing anyways so it's a big deal um, it just makes it so that in lower elos I'm sure you can play more junglers in higher elos this probably means nothing changes you're still going to have to play like the best junglers because there's still so many options for you decision-making trees to allow you to punish your opponents when they misplay. Uh, the camp updates, red and blue buff are like terrible for fiddle six to do because you don't know get bounces and amazing for for Kha'Zix. I didn't even mention this, but uh, Kha'Zix does red and blue even faster now, which is something that he didn't really need. You'd have to kill like the small ones first to get the nice isolated damage on the big one, but now you don't even have to do that. And then... Um, the Raptor camps, uh, you need to be an AOE champion like in the jungle to be good in the jungle because if you don't do Raptors quickly, they will kill you. They will kill you really fast and they won't care. You're, it's just it's really bad if you don't have AOE and like fast AOE. You got to kill it fast. Uh, same with Krux. If you don't do it quickly, then uh, you're gonna get punished. Like you're gonna take more damage and it doesn't feel great. Gromp. Uh, overall, I don't see much of a difference. Like. Uh, I guess if you are a slower jungler, you're not punished as hard for doing Gromp because his attack speed will like drop off. Um, whereas before, it just kind of felt like if it took forever to do Gromp, you were going to die. But they, it felt like they moved the power away from Gromp as much and moved it towards these two camps. So, um, you know, the Ramuses in the jungle are, are not going to just die to Gromp anymore. Uh, the Merc Wolves are the same. Rift Herald, I've honestly seen Rift Herald taken like two times out of all the games I've played so far. Uh, just not really a reason to take him. Uh, <laughs> it's still dangerous to take him. They lower the damage by a little bit, but if you get caught doing it, you're going to die. Um, and when you're super far ahead, you take it because there's nothing else to do. There's no dragons up. You've taken all the outer turrets. No one is around you. So the only times I see Rift Herald go down are in those super far ahead games where it doesn't really matter. So I, I think they need to make more changes to Rift Herald to make it more enticing, other than the fact that it does a little less damage. Elder Dragon, these changes were beneficial to late game team compositions because you, you can drag it out to late game and be behind and not just insta-lose because before it was like, if you're in a situation where Baron was up and Elder was up, if you were the team that was behind, then the enemy team is obviously posturing on Baron because Elder would take a long time to do if you've already done a lot of dragons. So if you're like the winning team, you didn't need to get Elder because it would like it was harder to do Elder, right? Um, and the losing team wouldn't get as much out of getting Elder, and Baron buff would last longer and just be better. So their team would just like be around Baron. If your team decided to trade Elder for Baron, which oftentimes would happen, you would just get screwed over. But now that Elder is, is worth a little bit more, it does, it's not as hard to do Elder Dragon. It becomes more of like, okay, well, if they get Baron and we get Elder, we're in a closer playing field. So a winning team super late game can can still like lose because they aren't playing well enough around both objectives rather than just one Baron. So this minimizes the gap a little bit between Elder and Baron, but I think Baron is still better. It's just you now have an opportunity to not insta-lose if they get Baron and you can only get Elder. Uh, you, you're going to see your last hits get messed up a little bit because the melee minions are a little bit tankier, but you'll adjust to that. And then uh, the tower changes, to be honest, I didn't notice it too much other than on the inhibitor towers. The inhibitor towers don't have the laser beams anymore. They're just consistent tower hits. Uh, they hurt, 
but uh, it, it actually feels a little bit easier to manage. I'm not sure if I've played enough with towers and paid attention to it to really see much of a difference other than on inhibitors. Um, didn't really notice a difference on this, but I haven't leaned as much this patch as I had before. Mostly played jungle. So let's talk about the new itemization for supports and itemization in general. So Aegis and Locket are more situational, but I originally thought Locket was just going to die with these changes, and then I started playing against a couple Janna mains that were building this item, and I hate this item now. <laughs> I hate playing against this item. If you're playing... You build this item if you're playing against champions that have predictable ultimates. So Amumus, uh, Syndras, Orianas, like ultimates that wind up, like you can see it's very predictable because uh, it has a it has a decay time on it that's that's pretty brief. But if you can activate it in time, this shield scales up into like late game being like 665 damage mitigation. It's it's really, really good late game. Probably better than it was before if you use it at the right moment. Because um, if I mean, like before, it was like you're getting that passive magic resist, which is great because you don't have to really think about it. It's just happening. Your team is taking poke, picking magic damage over a long period of time. You'd end up like getting more damage mitigation from the old locket than the new locket. But in big team fights where you're blocking like 600 damage on like multiple targets. That's a really big deal when those team fights are lasting like that, and you get it off before major ultimates. So Locket's a little more situational, you're not going to be building it as much, but in those situations that you do build it, this item is incredibly good because of how much bigger the shield is, and uh, you know very predictable ultimates can be countered by this. Uh, Banner of Command. This item feels weird. I haven't seen this item built more than once, and in that one game that it was built, it didn't feel that impactful. Um, there's so many good items right now for tanks and supports that it doesn't feel like there's a purpose for this. It, it just, I mean, if you're gonna, if you build Aegis, you're already planning on going lock it because it's gonna counter certain champions. I, I don't, I don't see this being that great. But I haven't played enough with it or seen it enough. But I think that's because it's considered to be not very great right now. Um, the chalice, the chalice changes. As far as I know and can tell, we're pretty good. I haven't seen it being built that often, but um, I mean, I think that's just because items like Redemption got better. So it might not be a bad item. It's like it's certainly like decent, but because of items like Redemption and Locket and stuff like that being situational and extremely good on supports, you don't see this item as much. Uh, but Redemption is going to get nerfed. Uh, I'm going to call it now. This item is this item should be pretty much built every game when you're playing support almost no matter what no, uh, no matter what your supports what your support is like a melee champion range like this item's just this item's just good like i could see this item being built even if you're not getting anything out of this because of the passive being just ridiculous the passive has a huge heal it, it can it can do a, a heavy amount of damage um it can help clear it, it's just um you can use it when you're dead. The only downside is if you aren't used to the cast time on this, you're going to miss it a couple times. But once you get down with the cast time, it's going to be a lot easier for you to help your team. I mean, you can use this while you're doing Baron. Just top your team off. It's it's really, really nice. Um, it's probably the best support item in the game for the price just because it does so much. And it, it just gives you regen and health, you know, uh, mana regen, health regen, a little bit of CDR. CDR is a little bit harder to get on this patch than it was before. So... A CDR item like this is still pretty good. Ardent Sensor, I mean, this is better earlier into the game than it used to be, but um, I don't see this item being built too much other than on like Janna's that already have like a redemption or have gone another itemization path, but this item's okay. Um, pretty good on the obvious ones. Mikhail's Crucible, uh, I like this item a lot, but the problems are supports are still not making as much money as you would like in game so you're still gonna have to like pick you know having sight stone your boot choice and then you have like maybe two items you can build before late game hits um, unless you're getting really really fed because you're ksing or your team is just doing really well so you're taking a ton of assists and at that point the game probably ends so this item is really hard to build in the sense that uh you know, you, you'd have to choose it other, other over other items like the redemption. The early redemption can be really big in team fights, um, but this item is going to be better. 
probably in the same situations it was built in before when you have champions you're playing against a champion like twisted fate predictable gold card um you slap that on your ad carry it, it feels pretty good when they're able to kite around it's a good item don't get me wrong there pretty much all the support itemization is is really good right now but what do you what do you choose right like if you're going to go redemption which i would recommend this item's insane uh, then your next item is what i mean like i guess it's going to be mikhail's on a lot of champions but there's still like a lot of options we haven't even gotten into knight's vow yet knight's vow it's just really good so on a lot of range supports maybe this would be pretty pretty good on uh like the janas the namis and stuff like that but um if you're melee support, you probably won't build this as much. And I'll talk to you why when we get to the Knight's Vow. Uh, Thieves and Holy Grail, pretty good, I guess. I mean, I, once again, haven't seen this item built as much. I've seen it mid Karma's build it. It's just cheaper, so I would assume that it's better. But this is the one item I'm not actually sure how much better it got because so many other changes are crazy. Knight's Vow is super good. Uh, if I'm a melee support, like Redemption is really good, but this is the one item I think can actually compete against Redemption in some situations because it just feels so ridiculously strong. If you've got a really good AD carry player, this item, this item is just tremendously powerful. I built this when I was playing Leona and I put it on my Draven. I also built Zeke's that game since he was having trouble because he had to go some uh, defensive optimization. He didn't have high crit chance. So I built Zeke's plus this and it synergized really well with this uh, part of the unique passive because it has like a healing component to heal your partner based on damage dealt to champions. Worked pretty well with Zeke's. Um, but yeah, this item, if you read it all, you'll just see there's so many stats loaded in it. It doesn't have any CDR though. That's like the one downside is if you rush this, you'll still have like a lot of need for cooldown reduction when you're playing something like Leona. So Knight's Vow, very, very strong. I think Redemption's still the strongest support item right now, but this item, should be built a lot of the time if you're a melee support it's it's just so good face of the mountain it's it's hard to be able to like deviate from a support path that could be knight's vow like if you go face of the mountain it's it's fairly expensive when you could just like get a knight's vow for a very a varied price very varied price and um obviously like redemption and uh, locket are also like very big contenders so i think face of the mountain is even though it got better, it's it's really hard to say it's a contender for those other uh, support itemization paths because they're also so good. They made a lot of things more efficient. Even Zeke's got better. Um, yada yada yada. Frozen Heart, very uh, very cost effective compared to where it was before. I mean, hundred less gold. I mean, it's basically free, right? I mean, uh, you're going to see more Frozen Hearts though if you're melee support because or the need to build it because there's less free cooldown reduction and like the best support items so if you want that uh, cap cdr you're probably gonna have to do frozen heart with cdr boots alistar to be honest i don't like this as much like i think you can do more damage with alistar support but i feel like he's worse uh i mean a mini malphite ultimate at level two is, is really hard to beat when they nerf that uh so uh i i don't know i i'm not too impressed with it like I think that you can definitely still play Alistar, but the consensus from talking to another support player uh, and and just kind of seeing Alistar's played, I think the old Alistar was better. And I think the changes were actually a nerf. Which, uh, to be honest, I I guess he's he's okay. I mean, bot lane it feels so weak right now if you're an AD carry because, um, I mean, you can't go armor pin. Like, one of the best old Twitch builds, and even on, like, Lucian and Jin, like, you're rushing Ghost Blade, and that's not an option. So Twitch doesn't have, like, an early power spike he can get, and that that's a that's a pretty big deal. I, I mean, if they made these changes and you could still go early Ghost Blade, I, I think it'd be really good. But it takes a while for him to ramp up. You can't get that early armor pin and just, like, crush people you have to go for like a standard like infinity edge uh what is it? infinity edge hurricane type build and that takes forever but um i'm sure as the patch and more patches come out there might be more deviations with items and maybe new items will come about or maybe changes to current items and you might see more twitch but i'm not too impressed with him um i think he's like insanely good late game but his early game is, is hit really hard by ghost blade not being a very good pickup for him ivern seems to be better than I originally gave him credit for. 
and that has to do with the fact that uh, he does better than New Jungle. Um, New Jungle is, is like, you know, it's typically harder to do camps like Raptor and, and Krug Camp, but Ivern can do it about the same. I mean, it's it's pretty much the same. And um, he can counter jungle and do do the same old, same old. So Ivern got a little bit better just because of the buffs to him. And in the new jungle, I think he's just flat out better than he was before because those camps are harder for other junglers, but it's the same for Ivern. So, and more people are used to how to play Ivern now. They're, they're not maxing Q anymore. They're actually maxing his E and uh, Daisy got better. So that, that gave him a lot more power. She's, she's Daisy smart now, you know, Daisy, Daisy, no stupid. So that was like a really big part of how Ivern would function as like a, a slowing and stunning bot. He would just get, he'd get Daisy out, uh, proc the slow with the E and just kind of stick to the target and get his team to chase the person down. Uh, Kled, I don't see any Kleds anymore. I saw him for a while. There's there's a couple Kled players in high elo, but uh, he's just kind of non-existent and it doesn't help that they nerfed his W, but he was pretty OP for a while. Like after, after all the nerfs they've given him, I feel like he's finally um, toned down enough that people aren't just like, spamming him because he did what he did so i i haven't played and seen enough cled to like say for sure that he's not pick worthy but i think it's it's harder to say he's pick worthy now that he's received so many nerfs and of course before they nerfed him he was seemed overtuned but he's been nerfed quite a bit probably still viable but i don't think he's op anymore abyssal this item just got weaker um i i don't like this item anymore this just only 10% more damage. Like the, the aura of magic reduction would actually provide more damage in a lot of situations against squishy champions. And, um, the, uh, the radius for this is the same. So I don't know. I don't like abyssal anymore. Um, I just feel like it's weaker overall. Revolver and proto bolt got weaker. This is a pretty big hit to something like Kennen, uh, who is going to build this every game and Evelyn jungle, uh, really big reason why she got a little bit weaker was because of this change. She doesn't have that early spike in damage when she gets Revolver, and she doesn't have as much damage when she gets Proto Belt, so that hurts her quite a bit. Mastery changes. Uh, I won't go through all of these because they're it's, the Masters aren't game changers, but um, I just want to talk about a couple of the, the Keystone changes. I mainly want to talk about uh, Courage of Colossus. This is so broken. Courage of Colossus is absurdly powerful. Uh, this is probably the best keystone in the game, if not the best. I mean, I can't even think of anything that would come close to this. If you can use Curse of Courage of Colossus on this patch, you are a champion that is probably pretty good on this patch. Um, there are going to be champions like Hecarim and Zac that can proc this more commonly, more frequently, and will get more out of this than a champion that can only proc it on an ultimate. Poppy actually is just stupid with this. I uh, with this keystone as well because she can proc it a lot of different ways but uh, Hecarim and Zac are really good junglers you take this you can just initiate in team fights proc it on Hecarim's E ability you can proc it on Zac's E ability and both on their ultimates um, just very broken keystone it will get nerfed I promise you that but one of the main reasons why assassins are terrible on this patch is because Courage of Colossus and the new support itemization utility is, is crazy good so very good and fervor is very bad very very bad fervor is i just hate fervor uh the old fervor was is way better um in a lot of situations on on hit champions and new fervor it's just it's way more situational i mean with attack damage already attack damage champions like 80 champions being weaker overall i think because of the armor pin changes you're not getting as much out of this as you would with the old fervor and on hit so the new fervor just is very underwhelming. Strength of Ages being removed will affect a lot of junglers. Like Olaf jungle has to take like Grasp of Undying. He can't benefit from Courage of Colossus because he can't proc it, but he's still good because of his ultimate. But Strength of Ages being removed does hurt a lot of junglers that can't use Courage of Colossus. And I think that's it. Looks like it's it. I talked about just about everything. Didn't talk about all the keystones. Or no, I did talk about all the keystones. I didn't talk about all the masteries. But um, thanks for watching. And if you have any questions, hit me up on my stream. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. That's weird. This played so bad now. The only champion that's going to be worthwhile building into is actually...